All right, so we are going to be talking about 10.2, plane curves and parametric equations. Now, I know you guys have learned this in pre-calc, but I wanted to remind you about what you know, and, um, and then we can go from there. So today is more but just about parametric curves, and then the next lesson will be about the calculus that we do with parametric curves. All right, so remember, in parametric equations, we use a third variable to show relationship. Often, that third variable is t, time, um, of the other two variables. So I want to show you in your book, this is on page 709. This is an example that the book gives. So normally, if we consider a path followed by an object, so you see here, propelled into the air at an angle of 45 degrees with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second, we have this um, parabolic path. Okay, so this is our normal physics equation that we use, and that's our rectangular equation. All right, but if I want to track the time of where that, where that uh, object goes, then I'm going to use parametric equations. So basically, we, we can convert this rectangular equation into these two parametric equations. So I'm tracking the x position with respect to time and the y position with respect to time. All right, so it's still this parabolic path, but I, um, when I graph it, I'm going to show arrows so that I know what's happening and when, when time started and, and when it ended and, and so forth. So the the graph along with the equations gives us what we call a, par a parametric curve, okay, a plane curve. So here's our definition. If f and g are continuous functions of t on an interval, then these are your equations, okay? So just like those two equations you just saw, those are called parametric equations. t is the parameter. And the set of points x, y, that we get from, if, if we plug in t, it's called the graph of the parametric equation, so that parabola that you saw. And then if we take together the parametric equations and the graph, then that's called a plane curve. All right. So let's do an example. So all we're going to do is we are given the parametric equations here, and we're given... Um, an interval for t. So we're just going to make a t-chart. Well, it'll be with three lines. So we're just making a table. So I'm going to track t, x, and y. So when t is negative 4, if I plug in negative 4 in for x, you get negative 9. And then when you plug in negative 4 in for y, you get 7. All right, so I know that that would be my coordinate at time negative 4. So let's, let's not do every single point. Let's just do every other one. So at negative 2, when I plug that in, I would get negative 5, 5. If I plug in 0, I would get negative 1, 3. Plug in 2, I would get 3, 1. And then 4, and so on. And then I'll, I'll do the last one so I know where I end up. And then all we're doing is graphing those. So uh, my first point that I would be graphing is negative 9, 7. Okay, and that's representative of t equals negative 4. All right, you don't have to put that in your graph, but I just want you to know that that's where that's coming from. All right, and then we've got um, negative 5, 5. Okay, that's when t equals negative 2. All right, and then we have negative 1, 3. And then 3, 1. 7, negative 1. And 9, negative 2. All right, so you see it's making a straight line. Okay, so this is the graph. Now I want to make sure that I put arrows to show the direction of time of my parameter. So t is, is happening starting from here to there versus the other way. So when you, this is, this is end up with t equals 5. So that along with your graphs is your plane curve. All right, so next what I want to show you, 
well, we'll do example two in a minute, but I want to show you an example of a Wolfram Alpha demonstration. All right, so this I need to scoot that down. So I wanted you to see that the equations, if you look down here at the very bottom, it says the track has parametric equations x equals 3 cosine of t, y equals 5 sine of t. All right, but what we're changing is what the parameter is. So this just shows you that you can have the same parametric equations and change the parameter, and it's going to change how that's traced. So these parametric equations give us this ellipse shape. All right, the graph on the right is the parameter. All right, showing us the parameter. Now, watch what happens when I animate that. So if I just have t, you're, you're going to watch the black dot. But if I have t squared over 5, then you're going to watch the blue dot. Okay, so let's play. So you can see that that black dot was ahead of the blue dot for the most part, and then the blue dot... Um, took it over. So again, if I were to take that blue dot off and maybe do the green one, you can see what that'll look like. So the black's kind of lagging behind, then the green goes backwards and then forwards, and then backwards again. So by the time the black reaches a full cycle. So again, you can you can trace a path with different with different um, speeds, I guess you could think of it, because the time is changing. So a fun thing that I like to do is let's do all of them and see what happens with all of these little dots. Okay. So it's almost like watching a horse race and seeing which one's going to end up finishing first. <laughs> all right. So there you go. Um, but you can search that Wolfram Alpha if you want to play with that a little more. So having seen that, what we're going to do is we're going to sketch the curve by eliminating that parameter and sketching the rectangular equation. So now we're seeing, okay, what, does, what do these parametric equations, how do we know what that's going to look like if we change it into rectangular? All right, so all we have to do is here we have x and y. So this one's very easy to do because I'm just going to solve. I know that I can plug in t there, so I'm going to solve this for t. So I'm going to do that by squaring both sides. Something to make note is that t has to be greater than or equal to 0 because t is underneath the square root. So we have to keep that in mind. So if t has to be greater than or equal to 0, then x also has to be greater than or equal to 0 for our rectangular equation. Okay, so keep that in mind if you have any kind of restrictions in your parameters that you have to then see how that affects the rectangular equation. So my, if I plug this in, all right, I'm going to get y equals x squared minus 5. So we know that's just a parabola that's shifted down. All right, so let's start at negative 5 and, and then go from there. All right, so since x has to be greater than 0, I'm not going to do the left half of the parabola. It's just going to go like that. Okay, and then um, again, I want to show time. So when t is equal to zero, um, we know that our coordinate would be at this point right here, zero, negative five. So this is the starting point, and it would be running that way. Okay, so that's our rectangular equation with our domain restriction. Okay, let's do another one. We're going to sketch the curve of these parametric equations and indicate the direction of the curve. All right, then we're going to convert the parametric to rectangular. So we're going to do both. So we're going to do the charts and we're going to do the parametric and see if they align with what we thought. So I'm going to start, look at our parametric equations. They're trig ones. So I'm going to start with zero, then do like pi over two, pi, 3 pi over 2, and see if we need to do any more. So if I plug in 0 for x, cosine of 0, remember, is 1. 
So then um, 1 times 5 will give me 5. And then if I do sine of 0, that's just 0. So my first point is 5, 0. And when I plug in pi over 2, cosine of that will be 0. And then sine of that is 1, so this will be 5. And then for pi, the only difference there is that cosine of pi will be negative 1, so this will be negative 5, comma, 0. And then if I switch that to be 3 pi over 2, that'll be 0 and then negative 5. So when I'm graphing this, I have those points. All right, if you wanted to, you could do more. Um, before I actually connect those to make a graph, let's, let's convert it to rectangular form to make sense. So when you have trig equations, remember our Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And if I solve then, instead of solving for t or x like we did in the last one, I'm going to solve this for cosine. So cosine of t is equal to x over 5. And sine of t is equal to y over 5. So if I replace that then, so for instead of doing sine of t, I'm going to be doing y divided by 5 squared. And then instead of cosine squared, I'm going to be doing x over 5 squared. Then you can see I've got this, which looks more like a conic, right? But notice that we have the same denominator. So that tells you, you you can multiply everything by 25 and get a nice equation that looks like this. So that's a circle with radius of 5. So that, again, tells you, okay, yes, you might have thought it was a circle, but that kind of confirms that this is going to be a circle, not an ellipse or anything like that. So it's going to and it's going to be going in that direction. The last thing I want to do is show you in your book some graphs. This is on page 717, number 66. All right, so these graphs, okay, we have labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. Ooh, maybe I should zoom out a little bit so we can see all of them. But there we go. But what I want you to do is I want you to match all of these graphs on the left with the parametric equations on the right. So pause the video, stop it, um, and then try to match them up. And then when you're done, we can go back and talk about it. All right, so by now you've, you've had a chance to look at it. Here are the correct answers, just so you can and um, check yourself. So the first one is F. Number two is C. Number three is D. Four is A. Five is B. And six is E. All right, so now let's, let's talk about some of the whys behind this. Actually, um, what I'd like to do is talk about... Um, I want to talk about the parameter. Notice that this isn't time, this is theta. So our, our parameter is really the angle. So just keep that in mind. So that's, that's what we're really looking at. So um, if you look at a lot of these graphs, the x values or the y values are restricted. So for example, on A, graph A, my x values only go from negative 1 to 1, and my y values look like they only go from negative 2 to 2. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, on B, the highest it goes, it looks like maybe to x equals 2. Um, on C, the x values only go from negative 1 to 0. All right, and then um, the y values only go from 1 to, oh, I covered that up. 1 to 3. So again, that's going to be really helpful as you look at these different parameters, is to look at your x, your, or your coordinates and um, see if there's any restrictions. So I wanted to look at number 3 first. All right, so these parameters right here, so D, 
All right, so for cosine of theta, keep in mind that those answers that you're going to get, whatever you plug in for theta, it's going to be somewhere in between positive 4 and negative 4. If there was no 4 there, cosine would be between positive 1 and negative 1. So that really helps us narrow down to this particular graph because my x values go from positive 4 to negative 4. So that's a trick that you can use. Um, on number 4, all right, so A, if I look at cosine cubed, all right, so my x value again, cosine cubed has to be in between, no matter what I plug in there, has to be between uh, a number between 1 and negative 1. So again, my x values, that's the only one where the x values are restricted that way, so they only go that far. So that's another way to match those up. Um, let's see, what's another one we can do that way? Cotangent is another one. So if I look at the one, number, number six, cotangent of theta, remember that's going to be, um, that's, that's all real numbers, right? So x, so cotangent of theta is anywhere between <laughs> positive infinity and negative infinity. So that's helpful too because that means our range has to go forever and ever, and that's how we knew it was E and not any of these other ones. The other ones had some kind of X value restriction. So, again, things to point out. Um, otherwise, what I did is I would plug in a value for T. So, like, 1 has T as your, as your parameter. If you plug in T equals 0, you get negative 1 or 2, which, you know, that could be either C or F. Um, but then if I plug in another point like t equals 2, I get 3, 4. So that's how I'm matching that up with f and not, and not c. Versus number 2, if I plug in 0, again, I get negative, two, negative 1 or 2. But then sine squared has to be sine squared minus 1. That has to be between uh, the 1 and the 0. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna help us with uh, sorry, that's probably confusing. Sine squared minus one. If, if we solve that, we're gonna get um, from negative one to if, if we square root that, that'll be um, negative one to one. So we, we see negative one, but then it doesn't stop to one because I can have any positive value. So, again, there's lots of ways to figure out how to match those up. Feel free to share those with each other if you need to. And then we'll do more calculus next time.